Hey Steve, it's Kevin. I'm looking over your Paces races and uh, it has been fully restored at some point. A very very nice machine. So that's the good news. Uh, bad news is I'm going to run through all the problems it has and then I'll talk to you later about prices to fix these problems. There is just a ton of copper filings that are sitting here so it's it's had a a lot of kind of grinding going on that's created a lot of shavings and uh, all this really needs to be cleaned up or it's gonna just get in here and gum up the works and be a real mess alright this this chain is laying down it has way too much slack in it and you can see that the chain lays across the top of this piece it's not supposed to be touching it and the chain also is laying across this bellows on the end and so as the game is running this chain is is just dragging across this bellows and it's going to just eat right through that bellows in in no time at all so this entire chain has to be removed taken out of the assembly and uh, I think I'm going to have to shorten it up. It doesn't look like there's anything missing that would cause the chain to be that long. Why they ended up putting in such a long chain I have no idea, but uh, it's going to take some time to get in and take a lot of this mechanism apart to get to that. Alright, as I told you on the phone when we talked, I was told that this thing has a bind in it and uh, this main drive wheel had busted and you can see where it's been brazed and re-welded well it busted a second time when they had it and then they re-brazed it and put this little plate on here and brazed that to really beef it up so it isn't going to break again but this entire wheel now has been brazed at an angle so when this motor runs you're going to see this thing wobble back and forth and it's pretty severe it's going to really wear on this chain and, and wear this out in no time so this has to be straightened and I don't know that I'm going to be able to straighten it out by just bending it I may have to break this weld and and re-weld it so all this has got to come apart in order to do that and get in there uh, that's a pretty good size crack across there. It's not loose or falling off, but just wanted you to know that it's there. That that's how it arrived. And right here in the glass, there's some pretty deep scratches. A whole bunch of them, right, right there. So, wanted you to know that's the way it came in. And there's uh, a lot of loose things in the cabinet that need to be tightened up. One of them is here on this jackpot mechanism right here. This is is loose. You get a better grab at it. Okay, so you know I, I may just be able to put a, a deeper screw or, or fix that hole where it's stripped out, put the screw back in and get this to, to suck in and, and sit properly maybe a, a quick fix but it, it does need to be fixed because with this sticking out when I put the door on when I put the door on I am not able to turn the key it stops because this is popped out not letting the bottom of the door go in all the way on these side covers there is supposed to be like a, a little latch or, or catch here that when you close the door it snaps in like a cabinet catch and it holds this in place. On both sides they're missing and so when you remove the, the top lid, the glass, these things just fall off and they're going to fall right off every time unless I add some some type of cabinet latch back in there. So. Now one other positive note is you have the jackpot model and and that is going to be filled with coins it 
is extremely rare to have that model where when you get the, the big payout it dumps that as well so um, it probably adds a couple grand to the value of the machine just to have that jackpot feature so excellent score on that I'm going to just do little spurts of power a tiny bit at a time to get this motor to walk and uh, you should hear the big clunk in the as we go I'll stop it right as it clunks here we go boom did you hear that thunk and now look at look at the chain hanging down okay that's not right. There's something that's got uh, a huge amount of slack in it. Yeah, right there. That's a pretty bad warble. So, you saw that thing fishtailing back and forth. They did not have that wheel straight and, you know, in line when they welded this or brazed it. Well this shaft is toast. Uh, it was weak right here in the middle when I tried to straighten things out it just broke in half and also the repeated welds that were done on this when the shaft broke it's got this thing at an angle it's not true and straight you can see it kind of kicks up at an angle and it's just going to be too difficult to try to repair this especially with this brake the uh, best thing to do is just try to make a brand new shaft from scratch and so I started on that this is a piece of hot roll steel and I'm starting to make the bends in it that will pump the bellows so I'm getting ready to make the next bend right now So this replacement shaft needs to have a bend in it so that the bellows has a stroke of exactly two inches. And so I'm using this shaft uh, coming up from the, the center line of, of this rod as it turns, or of this drive shaft. This is the center line and then I'm using this steel rule as an offset. I can tell that I'm one inch off. So the bellows will attach here and here and from center line a one inch stroke or one inch offset and then one inch the other way as it spins around that's a two inch stroke on the bellows and the shaft's coming along and by the way the, the background noise you hear is this clock I'm also restoring a time clock mechanism for another customer and uh, the movement has been electrified that's the electric motor in there it's uh, from probably the 30s or 40s and uh, pretty noisy but that's all original how it was modified back in the 40s so there you go let's get back to uh, to the shaft here's the main gear it comes off the motor I showed you before how wobbly it is and I'm about to straighten it. And here you go. Pretty straight now. I also had to re-drill the hole in the end here and I'm also going to have to tap or re-drill and tap the set screws that go in to grab it onto the main shaft because it's thrashed. Here is the new drive shaft in place with the gears remounted 
wheel is spinning nice and true and the way this shaft has been bent up is that I have one bellows and another bellows that are being driven 180 degrees apart from each other so while one's fully extended the other's fully compressed and then you have in opposition to these two you have these two at a 90 degree angle and those two are 180, 180 degrees apart so what you end up having is if you take a circle and divide it into four you have a bellows in each of the four quadrants of being at some degree of compressed or extended so every one-fourth of a turn there's a bellows that's in the middle of uh, acting in a certain position the reason there was so much slop in the chain is because whoever removed it to work on this did not put the chain back in the proper order of going over the rollers and the drive gear the way it's on now it's going in the proper sequence so it comes um, horizontally across the track and goes around this one roller and then down and around and that goes straight up past this one roller to the second roller and then up and horizontally across the top so before they just had it going around straight down and back up and it left a lot of extra slop chain in there so what that looks like from the other side now that the chain is back in the proper position there and there is that when the chain comes across you can see it's right there and right there horizontal and parallel to each other no more dragging or dropping down and you can see we have plenty of clearance now so this chain doesn't hit the top of the bellows anymore at some point when someone repaired this I think what happened was maybe mechanism got bound up and it busted a chain or, or two links maybe three links don't know but what I found was if you look at this link real careful and then this link you can see it's obviously way different thickness I try to show you sideways the uh, my guess is a couple links got broken and they found this to put in its place so my, my point is that these links were in here and you know it probably would last a long time with these in it but they're just not thick enough beefy enough that's what you needed problem is when I take these three links out the entire chain now is not long enough taking these three links out there was just no way to reconnect it you needed these links and I can't find that thickness of chain link it might be out there but I didn't find any uh, what I did do is this instead same exact chain link is here so I took two links out of this chain and then used it over here and that made it long enough but now this was two links shorter and this motor used to sit on here and was screwed in all I did was make four aluminum standoffs this is three quarter inch diameter aluminum bar stock and half inch thick I made four standoffs to raise the motor up just a little bit and now you're back on track so hopefully you're okay with that it's a good compromise since we uh, we had to have the right thickness of links over there and lucky for you this machine is taking English pennies just fine so over there in England you're going to be able to use this with your normal English currency All right, I'll load up a game and start it up Set 
up in the yard. And let's see what we ended up with. Uh, one, two, horse number three is the winner. And horse number three was paying four to one odds. So come over here. And what do we have? Four pennies. Let's watch another race. This time you'll see I've got it coined up. All the pennies will drop into here. Push these down so we can reload the coin tubes. And then this will be the fingers that look for if you bet on the winning horse when the race is over. Alright, this time what we're going to do is watch how the winning horse will push in the pin and the pin will raise up the little vacuum valve, pilot valve here and then underneath here you're going to see those curved bars which raise up and that's part of figuring out which horse goes to which odds, making the translation and then going on to the coin knives. And if you saw that bar there going up, that was translating the horse, connecting it to the right odds before the payout happened. All right, we'll look at it this time from underneath where you have seven bellows, one for each horse. And when the winning horse comes in, it causes the corresponding bellows to collapse. And that's what pushes up on that curved bar you saw before. Alright, so here come the horsies down the track. Alright. Was that one right there? And what you didn't see, I didn't turn the camera on until the horses were halfway down the track, but uh, right here this bellows pulls in and spins it. And that selects the new odds for the race. Alright, so this time We'll look at how the uh, coins pay out. You've got your different bellows here that one of these six will collapse and pull back either one or more of these. Uh, if you get this bellows collapsing, you're pulling back the entire stack. But uh, depending on how many get pulled back, that's how many coin knives slide away and uh, give you your coin payout. All right, here we go. Okay, we have a winner. And you saw this far back one pull in. And gives me my payout. And as I was saying, uh, if you get the big payout of 30 coins, this is the bellows that collapses. And so when I pull this back, you're going to see all of these pull back at the same time and then when I let go of the coin slides that's sheared off a huge stack of 30 plus the air that pulls in on this bellows this tube comes forward it's teed off so we pull it on this and this tube goes forward to hit the big jackpot so you dump the jackpot in the front of the machine also we had talked about replacing the glass, and so I just wanted to show you what it'll take to replace the glass. There is uh, a quarter round molding or bead that has little finishing nails here. So we'll have to pop these out and all the way up, pop out all four of those, and then the glass will come out. For more information, visit GameRoomRepair.com.